These three related compounds all have a split personality. Vitamin D is also a hormone with important autoimmune properties. Melatonin is also a powerful antioxidant. And the star of our show, melanin, is a pigment that can also perform human photosynthesis better than plants. And if you can believe it, melanin is also a battery and it's a radiation shield in space. Before I get to melanin, let's talk about new information about vitamin D and melatonin because I think they are all related. So first with vitamin D. Here we have a study that talks about a prescription for sunlight. And in this study, we read that vitamin D receptors have been discovered in most tissues and cells in the body and is able to elicit a wide variety of biological responses. Here's an example study of vitamin D on MS and it says in recent years, attention has been paid to the possible association between MS and vitamin D deficiency. Next is melatonin. About 5% of melatonin is synthesized in the pineal gland. The other 95% is made inside the cells and influences glucose metabolism. Melatonin has long been known to be an endogenously produced anti-cancer agent for multiple tumor types, and it is also being used in makeup for its skin protection qualities. The Melanin Miracle and Human Photosynthesis Photoelectrochemical Properties of Melanin, written by Solis and team, is from Nature Magazine. Dr. Solis is an eye doctor, and he discovered that melanin is more than a mere sunblock. He believed the main function of melanin in the eye is to generate chemical energy. So let's check out his definition from the Nature article. Melanin is to the animal kingdom like chlorophyll is to the vegetal kingdom. Melanin collects energy from low energy radiation sources, kicks electrons into excited states, initiating a process that would end up producing chemical energy. Now the rest of the article deals more with the properties of melanin that can be used in embedded electronics. So here's another paper from Dr. Solis and team that deals with human photosynthesis. Photosynthesis in humans. Here he explains, if only the human knew he had the ability to disassociate the molecule of water and do it irreversibly. If he's correct, it means that biology is either a little bit wrong or very wrong, depending on how much cellular energy comes from melanin. Since he calls it human photosynthesis, let's review how plants do it and see how similar they are. Plant photosynthesis, the water splitting photosystem. Now I'm going to skip to step three where the water splitting happens because I think that's one of the most important parts. And it says, to replace electrons sent to the electron transport chain, water molecules are split, which releases energy, oxygen, and hydrogen, which is also energetic. Here are the formulas for chlorophyll and melanin. And you can see the melanin reaction goes both ways and the production of four high energy electrons. This is why I said it was better because it goes both ways and we'll see later in the melanin battery how that production of four electrons is important. Dr. Solis wrote a book on human photosynthesis and he also holds a U.S. patent for his discovery. Here again is a mention of creating hydrogen by splitting water which is the basis for generating electricity using melanin. Let's go to Dr. Solis' Human Photosynthesis Lab in Aguascalientes, Mexico, and check out the BatGen battery. The reason a melanin battery is called the BatGen is because it acts as both a battery and a generator. It continually splits and reforms the water molecule and then captures the energy it creates. Here we can see liquid melanin in various size containers daisy chain together to generate more power. He's testing different container sizes and shapes using different concentrations of melanin to determine which configuration generates the most energy. The power generated is measured in millivolts and last I read he was able to create a two volt container. About five of these containers would be equivalent to a nine volt battery. Here we can see some prototypes for cell power traffic cones and finally 
we can see the melanin powered LCD lights. Melanin in space. Melanin samples went to space to test its ability to protect against radiation. Melanin also holds great potential to shield humans and equipment from radiation in space. Here we have a quote from the PhD and he says that melanin is good at absorbing electromagnetic radiation but he does not mention how. The next article speaks to the Nature magazine topic of embedding electronics in the human body and using melanin as a power source. This experiment was also done in space. And finally, we have a NASA study which talks a lot about fungus, but it does eventually mention melanin and DNA repair in the title, but it switches to talking about the fungi. Fungus. Dr. Solis also has thoughts about melanin in space. He believes the dark brown areas in space surrounding energy sources are melanin. Here's another picture with the dark areas, and he says melanin forms a large galaxy-sized mass in space. All right, coming back to Earth. If Dr. Solis is correct, in my opinion, he at least deserves a Nobel Prize for biology, not only for correcting biology in humans, but all melanated organisms. His observations of melanin in the trunks of trees, in the outer layer of scorpions, in the skin of fish, and the head of mosquitoes are examples of how prevalent melanin is in nature and its possible use to generate energy. So what do you think? Is melanin a miracle molecule? Leave a comment and let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.